my own hometown. Stranger. Yeah. Howdy, folks. Little John here. And I have to welcome you to uh, first day of winter, 2018, and also what will be the first episode, or the first video of Five on Friday. Uh, we'll sit down, we'll have a little bit of a yak about, uh, just a quick chat about uh, different things with brewing. Not a lot of um, demo stuff, but just a little bit of knowledge and tips on a few things that um, will help with uh, you know, getting your beer to be as good as it can. Uh, today's uh, video is brought to us by uh, with a little bit of support from Bullet Brewing, a bit of rye uh, whiskey to start off Friday afternoon. I don't like to drink before lunch, so it's probably about five minutes past twelve. Right. For today's topic is temperature control. Uh, and it's probably, temperature control is probably the one thing that uh, most brewers initially when they're first brewing uh, have trouble with. Um, we go out and you buy, you buy a kit and you stick it in the garage or a spare room or in the laundry or wherever it is and the temperature goes up and down depending on the you know, it's day, it's night, it's high and low depending on the seasons and it doesn't do your beer any good. Yeast is a, um, as much as it's very tolerant and works in a wide range of temperatures, it prefers to be in a nice little band and to stay in that sort of, in that band to work at its best and to produce its best flavours. In order to do that, we need to be able to control the temperature that your fermenter is sitting at. And the easiest way of doing that, and the most effective, is to use a temperature controlled fridge. Well, some people will use a cabinet, um, but it's, the cabinets tend to come from the old school of having to have your brew you know, nice and warm. Uh, we know better than that these days. We know we don't want it warm, we want a bit more on the cool side for, uh, for better quality. So what we do is we need to get a fridge that we can control, and these days, it's so easy to pick up a cheap fridge. You can get a cheap fridge on Buy, Swap and Sell, Gumtree, you know, even on eBay so easily. And you don't need to spend anything over $100 to pick up a decent sized fridge that's going to do the job. Uh, plenty of you guys pick them up for nothing, 20 bucks, yeah, pretty next to nothing. But what you need to control that temperature is you need a device. And there's certain devices that are set to do that. Um, this is one, this is a very popular. Um, up until recently, uh, it's an STC 1000. They come as an STC 100, depending on the model. Um, these come out of China, and they've been around for donkey's ages, and they're used in everything: commercial refrigeration, and you can use them to control your temperature, heating, and cooling. Um, I've got a couple of these on my fridges at home. You put them together quite easily. A uh, little bit of a yeah plastic container couple of uh, cheapo extension cords, some power yeah, terminals and you can, you can sit down in half an hour you can get the pieces together and put them together, the information is there on the internet if you want it. Other things that people use are, are what's now um, Inkbirds, the new company that's come on to uh, the temp controller market, really big, they've got an ITC uh, Inkbird 308 or i308. Um, I'll put some links in the in the um, description. And they just plug and play. You plug your fridge in. You plug a, a heat source that goes in your fridge, which will normally be some sort of heat belt or a heat mat. Um, it's preferable to use these things to warm the air inside the fridge, not the actual fermenter itself. We don't. You don't want to direct heat the yeast. Heat the air up and let the fermenter and your beer come up to a nice to a nice level temperature. So. You can grab yourself one of these, and for under thirty dollars, you can make put this together, and away you go. Uh, I think the, the birds you can get them for around fifty dollars delivered. Um, you can't go wrong. So even if you go and buy a fridge for under one hundred and fifty dollars, and for a lot of cases under a hundred, you can get firm, you can get that control of temperature, and it seriously is the first big step you'll make to making. You know, better beer, good quality beer that you'll be happy to share with people. Uh, I couldn't believe the difference when I done it, and, any, and everybody will tell you when they first.
give that temperature control, they can't believe the difference. Of course, there are other factors, but temperature control is really, really important. Um, up there with sanitation, as far as I'm concerned, the three big ones, sanitation, temperature control, and healthy yeast numbers. They're the three things you've got to get under control. You've got to really nail down to make a good beer. And it's simple, it's easy, it's accessible to everybody. So if you want to make one yourself and you've got a little, yeah, you don't, not too worried about playing around with electricity and you're confident in what you can do, make one yourself. Have a quick look. Not hard to do. If you're a bit worried about it, you're not, yeah, you're not Mr. Um, Mr. Handyman, you're not real confident, grab yourself yeah, a pre-made one off, the, off, the, um, off eBay. You can get it from your home brew shop. They range yeah, up to about $70. So there's no reason why you can't easily get temperature control. So have a go at it, have a look. Take the step and make yourself some better beer. So until uh, looking at you again next Friday, good brewing. Bye.